I was driving down Turn 3, which is a high-speed corner, uh, travelling at about 160 and stuff like that, I, I didn't have brakes. My name is Alfred. Everyone knows me as Panda. I drive a 2010 Honda Civic Type R. The first few modifications to it was to maintain the car back to its original state. Modifications came after when I decided to go onto the track. That's how the spoon build came about. Yeah. Many years back, I already liked spoon sports. Partially because they are very popular for their endurance race in Japan and they are super tight queue. I always wanted to have a Honda where I can build uh, a full spoon build. And then that's how it came to how it is today. Though. I, I tried different cars on the track before. Uh, I happened to come across my friend's car who is on Cusco one way and Cusco three way. The drive felt very different from uh, how my car used to be like. That's when I considered very hard whether to invest in a good set of coilovers because I didn't build my car with power. I concentrate more on handling. My first actual track experience started in Sepang about three years back. I, I still remember when I first went on the track, I remember my timing was three minutes, 15 seconds. And that was like super slow at that point of time. Ever since then, I, go, I try to go every month. And then every month I cut more and more timing. I got some expertise, some training from a guy called Matthew from Grip Academy. He, he's, he's sort of like my, my, my sifu kind of thing. From then onwards, uh, my timing has been dropping until now it's 2 minutes 35 seconds. I'm trying to get into the 33 to 34 seconds uh, mark. I never had one track day where my car didn't broke down. Um, even, even when I say that I try to get the car to a, to a proper driving condition. I remember the first um, incident was my brake hose got cut halfway through the track. And then I was driving down turn three, which is a high speed corner, uh, traveling at about 160 and stuff like that. I, I didn't have brakes. First thing I did was I tried to slow down the car by dropping down the gears and stuff like that. I was lucky that the, there was a there was a slight runway that I can go into. Uh, came out fine. There were many many incidents. Uh, there were really many incidents. Then that's where I decided to change my build. That's how it ended up now being a full spoon build. I think the misconception that people have about our community is built up from Facebook pages like SGRV and stuff like that. You have people driving on the road with in-car cam, you know, taking videos of cars, overtaking cars. It might not be, a, a, you know, car racing or whatever, but to them, they feel like, you know, take, overtaking car at a faster speed is just notorious to the road. I think this kind of misconception, it's all built up from pages like that. You will see comments like, oh, that def definitely must be the, the, the JDM's fault. Definitely must be the supercar's fault. I think this kind of misconception has to go. I always tell my friends, you know, my group of friends, if you want to play, you bring the car up to the track. Don't make it a road hazard to the people on the road. So, not all people that drive JDM cars or souped up Conti cars are road hazards or reckless drivers. We are not like that. So this kind of misconception got to go. I, I think the community that followed me on Instagram, they follow me because they don't really see this kind of build elsewhere. I think my followers like my build, not because, not just because of the build, because of the, the photos and stuff like that that I take uh, on the track and stuff. I share my experience of what I have on my FD. You know, everyone starts from somewhere. So don't go and bother about what people say as long as you feel that you like your car, you like to maintain it, you want to modify it. Don't bother about what other people say.